Good day, everyone across North America. This is Terrence Boyd with Sony's Professional Display Solutions Americas team. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. And for those of you who have been tuning into this series since early 2020, welcome back. We've developed these series of webinars so that our customers, resellers, integrators, and consultants can stay informed and up to date with Sony's latest products and solutions. In today's Tech Tuesday session, we'll <laughs> dive a bit deeper into the projection display topic as we look at how our users are expanding the visual experience with 21 by 9 support. As in all of our uh, Tech Tuesdays, we've got a couple of housekeeping items. First off, in all of our webinars, there'll be an opportunity for Q&A. So please submit your questions via the InEvent meeting uh, question panel over on your right side of the screen. We'll also post any relevant links to information referred to during the webinar, during the chat panel, and we'll also post a link of our YouTube uh, playlist where you can view all of our archived Tech Tuesday webinars, in including this one today. Joining me today are Russell Warnhoff, Western Zone uh, Sales Support Trainer for our CI channel business, and Drew Buttress, Senior Product Manager for our Pro Projection line of projectors. So let's get started, and I'll see you over at the uh, Q&A section at the end here. So with that, let's kick it over to Drew and tell us a little bit about what uh, the 21 by 9 aspect ratio is. Thanks, Terrence. Um, so there's been a lot of buzz in the AV industry uh, for a year or more now uh, about 21.9. And what it really is, is a uh, aspect ratio, right? So we're familiar with WUXGA, which is a 16.10 or 16 by 10 um, aspect ratio where the resolution would be 1920 by 1200. Of course, we're familiar with full HD, like our TVs, that it would be uh, a 16 by 9 and that would be 1920 by 1080. And what um, the 21.9 aspect ratio does is it's, it, it's basically expanding horizontally uh, the resolution so that you're now able to uh, see basically 2560 by 1080 pixels or even as high as 3440 by 1440 pixels. To give you an idea of, of how it works with our uh, a couple of our projection classes, uh, your, your, your output signal from the PC or it, let's say a Microsoft Teams front row uh, appliance is going to output the 2560 by 1080. The input signal is still that 2560 by 1080, but because our projectors are native WUXGA, what we're actually going to illuminate is 1920 by 810. So we're getting the aspect ratio of 21 by 9 but we're really only lighting up three quarters of our LCD panels. Uh, the question is always, you know, well, what's, a, what's the optimum screen size? Um, this chart kind of shows you what the different diagonals, um, you know, in, in both uh, uh, empirical units and, and metric units. Um, ideally, a 138-inch diagonal is going to give you the biggest uh, representation. If we're talking about Microsoft Teams front row, um, what you have is, is larger uh, face boxes of the participants on the far end of the call. So an example of our VPL FHZ85 with our VPLL 3003 ultra short throw lens projecting on a 130 inch diagonal screen. It gives you a good idea of how high the screen would be from the floor, uh, the height of the projected image, and then also the distance from the screen that the projector would be set back. On the next slide, we're also still using the FHZ85, but now we're gonna um, apply the VPLL Z3010 short throw lens, still on that 130 inch diagonal screen, um, but now you get an idea of how much further back the projector would be from that screen. The, in order to, uh, this firmware is posted on our global website. I'll dwell on this for a minute if you want to take a picture of that QR code. Uh, but there are links here to uh, get to the firmware and you download the firmware file. Um, and then there's some instructions uh, on that page showing you how to uh, either do it across the, the network or uh, an easier way is to do it uh, by loading a, a certain 
binary file onto a uh, USB drive. And on our compact series, the PHZ series, uh, here is also the, the QR code and, and same idea. These are all posted on our global website. Give you a second to take a picture. And with that, uh, I'm gonna hand this off to Russell. Russell, take it away. Thank you, Drew. Um, all right, so we are gonna talk a little bit about the history of widescreen applications, um, kind of where this format came from. Uh, Drew did a great job explaining the 21 by nine aspect ratio, uh, but we're gonna touch on the history of uh, essentially this aspect ratio and where it started. So um, first we kind of have to travel back in time and, and, and discuss what is CinemaScope and how widescreen transformed our industry and what we know today. So before we dive into uh, the CinemaScope technology, um, I kind of want to touch on uh, what an aspect ratio is. Um, Drew touched on this earlier, but um, as we all know, the aspect ratio is the shape of an image. As we see here, it's represented as the width in relation to the height. So anytime you see a, a two numbers, let's say 16 by nine, uh, that first number is gonna be the width. The second number is the relationship to the height. In TV, we refer to these as whole numbers. So of course we're used to seeing the 16 by nine aspect ratio or 16 by 10. All this means is that the image is literally 16 units wide by nine units tall. In film, they refer to it as a fractional number. So instead of 16 by nine, it's 1.78 to one. All that means is the image is literally 1.78 time, uh, times wider than it is tall. So it's easier for uh, consumers and our industry to just adopt the whole numbers. How we get the math, if you take 16 and divide it by nine, you get 1.78. So that's kind of how uh, these ratios work. Going back to the early days of film, uh, the first motion picture standard developed by Hollywood uh, was the use of 35 millimeter film frame. Uh, this carried a aspect ratio of 1.33 to 1. Uh, 1.33 to 1 is almost square. The image is only slightly wider than it is tall. Uh, when TVs came out, they just adopted the same aspect ratio. Instead of calling it a fractional number, they called it 4 by 3. That's essentially where we came uh, up with four by three televisions that we know today. Now, widescreen is a technology that was invented uh, during the 1950s. Uh, part of the problem was is in the 50s, the movie studios were starting to feel the effects of television on the film industry. Instead of going out to the local cinemas, people were staying at home in their living rooms watching their television sets that they just bought. To counter this, the movie studios were trying to come up with new innovative ways to get people out of their living rooms and back into the local cinemas. We all know 3D technology, right? This is where this uh, started. Uh, they also tried smell -o vision didn't work so well, uh, but they landed on something and that was widescreen. Now widescreen really was different from what we were viewing in our living rooms. One of the strategies uh, that the movie studios tried was to envelop us in this wider image. They wanted to create an experience that you could get in the cinema that you couldn't replicate at home. One of the challenges was, is how do you get a widescreen image onto a square piece of film, right? It's 1.33 to one or shares that four by three aspect ratio. This is one of the ways that they would do this, but in doing so, um, there was wasted brightness and resolution. Uh, when you would blow this image up in the local cinemas and project it onto a wider screen, it didn't look very good because you weren't exposing the full 35 millimeter film. So uh, this is where widescreen and kind of the innovation took place. Uh, CinemaScope was developed, Cinerama and other widescreen formats were made available. The whole point of this again is to immerse us in this experience. One of the first strategies was a technology called Cinerama and this involved uh, using three different cameras. And when they would play it back in the theaters, it involved three projection systems. So they took, uh, you can imagine how difficult this was, especially for action movies, you know, trying to shoot a movie and capture the scene with one camera is challenging. Now you add two more uh, cameras to try to get this, this image. Um, here's a slide of kind of how this, this looked. 
um, in the theaters. So picture, you know, you're shooting a movie scene and you've got three cameras trying to capture that moment in time. And then the theaters had the three projection systems and they would image blend the three pr uh, projectors resulting in an image that was almost three times wider than it was tall. So uh, for those of you who maybe have seen, you know, some movies like How the West Was Won or This is Cinerama, uh, this aspect ratio is, you know, 2.6 times wider than it is tall and uh, very, very wide, but it was challenging, very, very expensive to do, and uh, it wasn't very practical. They finally landed on a solution on how to get full brightness and resolution, and that was through the use of an anamorphic lens that was attached to the camera. And this was developed uh, actually in the early 1900s by a French uh, optical engineer and was later used in the early 1950s to recreate this process. So how this works is uh, an anamorphic lens is attached to the front of the camera. They shoot the scene and the lens squeezes that image, resulting in an image that is tall and skinny on the film frame. When they would play this back at the local cinemas, they would have an anamorphic lens on the front of the camera, or excuse me, the projector that would expand the image resulting in the correct aspect ratio being displayed on the screen. This was called CinemaScope. This is what we know is 2.35 to one today, or is commonly known in a whole number is 21 by nine. Uh, the Robe was one of the first movies that was uh, released in the CinemaScope format. And again, the idea was to give uh, theater goers an experience that they couldn't replicate in the home. So really, really cool uh, technology that was developed decades ago um, that we still see uh, used today in terms of the aspect ratios. Some other common aspect ratios uh, are 1.33 to 1. We rarely see this today. Um, this is mostly used for some of the older uh, movie releases. Um, then we also have our 16 by 9 or our 1.85 to 1, which is called Academy Flat. This is used for a lot of comedies, dramas, uh, trying to focus on a more intimate scale. But then, of course, we have our 21 by 9, or let's say 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. 70% um, of the top grossing movies of all time uh, have used this aspect ratio in their releases and uh, is commonly being used today. So as human beings, uh, you know, we see more in our peripheral vision. Our eyes sit horizontal on our face. And as a content creator, director, or cinematographer, uh, the idea of, of 21 by 9 is to encapsulate us and to immerse us in that experience. Here's an example of a uh, 2.35 to 1 image on a 16 by 9 screen. You see the black bars uh, on the top and bottom of the image. Well, if you replace that with a 235 to 1 screen and a compatible Sony projector, we're able to eliminate those black bars, giving us a immersive image. Here's an example of uh, just a, a theater. Uh, that's designed using a, a Sony projector. Um, instead of using a 16 by 9 screen, going with the, the larger 235 to 1 image for those cinematic uh, movies. So uh, there's a little bit of history on uh, where this aspect ratio started. I'm going to pass it back to Drew for more information. Thank you, Russell. So. Um... There's really two parts to how you can project the, the 21.9 um, on our Sony projectors. And it starts with the PC or the, the, the device, but I'm gonna use a PC, uh, you know, how we would set this up. So five initial steps, pretty easy. Uh, click on your taskbar in Windows. You wanna go to settings, click on system, click on display. And then once on that display, uh, you wanna kind of rearrange it so that the uh, uh, image two is your predominant um, or, se or selected image. Once there, you can um, go into uh, this display settings box and you want to change from whatever your, your PC is and assuming it can actually handle the 2560 by uh, 1080, you would then select that. And then once you get prompted, say select keep change, and then it, you're gonna click on the advanced settings and, and you'll actually see the display resolution update to that 2560 by 1080. Click on advanced settings. And once there, um, you then wanna turn around and select the, you wanna make sure that your desktop resolution and your active signal resolution are the same. Again, here it is the 2560 by 1080. And then the refresh rate. 
we're, we're showing it at 30 hertz because it gives you much better picture quality, but we can the projectors can certainly handle um, a 60 hertz input, and I'll show you what happens on the projector next. But when you have the project, projector on, you go to the information screen, and you'll see that you're now uh, taking in a 2560 by 1080 signal at 30 frames a second. And then uh, you'll also, uh, on the next slide, I'm going to show you how to go change the, uh, the actual screen aspect ratio um, in, in one of our setup menus. So on the projector side, there really are just three steps. Uh, uh, first, you're going to um, um, uh, bring up this, this first screen, and you're going to select the aspect as full. Then you're going to go to the um, uh, connections menu, go to the HDMI signal format, um, and there you can either select standard or enhanced. And in standard, we can only go up to 30 frames a second. If you are going to be sending a 60 frame per second signal, then you need to change that to enhanced. And then finally, you go to the um, screen menu or the installation menu, go to screen aspect, and then change from either 16, 10, 69, whatever the, um, is, is currently set, and select 21.9. So that leads us into what are some of the commercial AV applications. Russell's already kind of explained what's happened to, uh, to bring that widescreen. Um, and, and the whole idea is really you're, you're, you're trying to create a more immersive experience. Obviously, in the hybrid meeting room, um, it's a screenshot of, of um, a Microsoft Teams front row room where you've got uh, all or many of the participants uh, on the far end. You can have content shown. You've got a, a really a big palette to put a lot of information. So certainly uh, we're seeing that in the corporate space um, in these hybrid meeting rooms. But this goes beyond that. You can go with these wider views for things like architectural and engineering. Um, in, in a setting where you're presenting, you know, um, you know, workflow planning, you're showing calendars, you're showing financials, you, you have a much bigger um, space to be displaying that information. And then certainly in art and entertainment, that, that wide view, that wide display is really uh, creating that much, you know, a much more um, immersive experience. So, you know, we've seen it in classrooms, certainly meeting rooms, I've already mentioned. Um, you know, even think about golf simulators. If you've got the space uh, to put in the golf simulator, you go with a wider screen and it, it looks, it'll let, let you feel like you're actually out on the course. And so with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Terrence for our uh, Q&A session. Well, thank you, Drew. That's great. And those applications, uh, those, those applications, it sounds like, you know, at, as people start to learn how to use uh, the 21 by 9 support, uh, we're figuring out more and more ways of how to adopt and incorporate that kind of wider, more immersive canvas into uh, into the, you know, the viewer experience. So that's, that's really good to see. And it's also good. And thank you, Russell, for being able to share kind of the history of that. Cause, um, I, as you mentioned, it's been in use quite a bit on the, on the, on the excuse me, on the cinema side as well. So, uh, that's, uh, it was interesting to kind of learn more about that and especially going all the way back to the cinescope days and, and what in the cinemascope days. So that's great. Um, Drew, I did have a question for you just real quick. Uh, can you just reiterate what models that these, uh, this 21 by nine support is available on now with our, for our projection, uh, professional range? Absolutely. So our, our compact series, which is the, uh, VPL PHZ 51 or VPL PHC 61. Uh, that's our, our compact, uh, you know, fixed lens. And then our, our what we call our installation series, uh, where you have interchangeable lenses, that would be the VPL FHZ 80 or the VPL FHZ 85. Okay, that's great. And so I think uh, we'll work on getting those links posted here. And I know there was the QR code that was in the presentation, uh, but we'll work on getting those links posted here for the uh, for both of those series. Uh, so viewers can go um, for users who may already have the, the projectors. Again, it's a firmware uh, download firmware upgrade uh, that's available through our pro.sony.com website. Um, and then I believe we're also shipping now uh, units. So those units are also shipping now with that firmware update uh, pre-installed on them. Is that correct, Drew? Uh, that's my understanding, yep. 
Okay, great. And then Russell, just real quick from your side on the on the on the the custom install type projectors, can you just quickly run through which models uh, also support uh, support this as well? On the home cinema side, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, there's four models uh, that we currently have on the home cinema lineup. Uh, we've got our GTZ 380. Um, that's our flagship uh, reference laser uh, native 4K projector. Uh, we've, al we've also got our XW7000, our XW6000, and our XW5000ES uh, projectors, um, all of which are compatible uh, in some way, shape, or form with uh, 21 by 9 or, or 235 to 1 solutions. All right. Uh, let's see. We also have another question here. Uh, David is asking... Uh, there was a big surge in the use of short throw projectors. Oh, let's get There was a big use of uh, a big surge in the use of short throw projectors starting about uh, 10 years ago. Um, is this a new wide format trend? Is this new wide format trend compatible with the very short throw configurations? Drew, do you want to give that one a stab? Yeah, sure. So, so the older ultra short throw projectors, um, probably don't support that aspect ratio. Um, uh, on the Sony lineup, it would be our, our uh, FHZ 80 or 85 using our ultra short throw lens, which is that VPLL 3003. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, let's see, they're rolling in pretty fast here. Uh, let's see, I've got Colin asking, can 21 by 9 aspect ratio projectors be seamlessly integrated with other AV equipment, such as audio systems and uh, control interfaces? Uh, Drew, you want to take a stab at that yeah. one? Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, the projectors have long been compatible with um, various control systems. Um, I think if you were to go look at uh, Crestron has an appliance called the UC-100T. And I may not have that part number exactly correct, but I think the audio would be sourced from that and not from the projector. Um, but certainly um, um, you can integrate these in with like room control systems. Okay. Uh, let's see another question from, let's see, we got one from David. 21 by nine presents many technical considerations. If you, as you said here, how does Sony's SXRD and your three LCD compare in this formatting? And the second part to that is, and with DLP uh, projection from others. Um, well, I'll 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 actually, take I'll, I'll take ahead. the uh, I'll take the first part. I'll leave SXRD yeah. to Russell because he's he's okay. already called out the 380. But on the on the um, on the pro side, um, the the big difference between LCD and DLP is DLP is is running the light through a color wheel and what happens is you you really lose color brightness compared to your white brightness okay on on three lcd panels the light is split into your red green and blue components and what happens is your your color brightness is exactly the same as your white brightness um, um I'll, I'll 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 leave it at that and uh russell if you want to take a shot at the sxrd Sure thing. Yeah, so our um, the, the four projectors I mentioned before, uh, those are all native 4K uh, laser projectors that utilize our SXRD technology. Uh, the, the great thing about SXRD is, you know, it's a reflective technology. Um, it allows for maximum brightness. Um, the pixel structure is very, very thin in between each pixel. So you get a smooth film-like look uh, with SXRD. Uh, compared to um, some other technologies that have more of a coarser um, kind of pixel structure like DLP or LCD. Uh, so again, you get that film-like look, um, great brightness, and um, yeah, you can use the uh, the home cinema SXRD projectors and, you know, and all different types of applications. So, Okay. Thank you, Russell, and thank you, Drew, for that. Um, let's see. Here's another question. Bart is asking, uh, when sizing displays, especially with video conferencing applications, and more specifically, is it safe to assume that the content window is roughly 70% of the display's diagonal? So, for example, a 105-inch diagonal 21 by 9 display, the presentation content window would, 
be roughly 70 inch diagonal. Russell, you, you want to take that one? For the, the, the 21 by nine, sorry, go ahead again, Terrence, the last part of that question. Yeah, for example, for a 105 inch diagonal 21 by nine display, the presentation content window would roughly be 70% diagonal or 70 inch diagonal. Correct, yeah, so if you're trying to size uh, if you're looking at like, let's say a 16 by nine screen inside of a, a two, three, five to one or 21 by nine screen, um, the height is going to remain the same of the, the overall screen size, but the width is what, uh, what gets wider. You're looking at roughly 33% increase in, in width, um, going from like 16 by nine to, um, to two, three, five or 21 by nine. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's see, another question coming in. Um, John is asking, can the projectors easily switch between 21 by nine and 16 by nine modes? Drew, you wanna take that one? Go ahead, Drew. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it's gonna depend on your source content, how it's gonna look. But, but as far as answering the question, um, there's a menu setup that you can go to um, change that screen aspect ratio. And on our projectors, you can do 16.10, 16.9, now the 21.9, as well as 4.3. So if it's really old standard def content and you want to display it, you know, again, um, putting it up on a screen that's, that's built for 21.9, the other aspect ratios are going to look a little odd. You'll have kind of that picture frame or window, whatever you want to call it. Um, you'll have boxes, but um, overall, it's very easy to just change the aspect ratio. It's a, it's one of the menu screens you can bring up with either the IR remote or if uh, this was mounted on the floor or you know on a stand. Um, there are buttons on the projectors to bring up those menus. Okay, thanks, Drew. Uh, another one coming in here. Gabe is asking: Does this open the commercial projectors to picture position zoomed anamorphic support? I'll, I'll toss that out to either of you. <laughs> so on the yeah, on, on the home cinema side uh, with our, our CI uh, models, uh, they do have picture position. That's actually one of the ways to um, to get you know a projected image of two, three, five to one. Um, you literally just save a preset for your sixteen by nine or, or one aspect ratio, and then you've got a few other presets that you can save for two, three, five to one. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way is uh, by what Drew was kind of touching on by getting into the, the menu of the projector. And um, uh, the projector has built in scaling modes uh, called V stretch or vertical stretch. And uh, when you engage this in the home cinema line of projectors, um, you go back to, uh, if you remember from the presentation where the image was kind of tall and skinny, everything was stretched out on the film frame. Uh, that's what the projector does to the source content. It stretches the, um, the black bars uh, out and it stretches that content uh, vertically. Um, and then to maximize this, you would pair it with an anamorphic lens and those solutions for the home cinema uh, projectors. So there's two ways to go about it on the home cinema side. But Drew, I'll let you, I'll let you touch on that on the pro line of projectors. Well, I... I mean, I, all I was going to say is on the pro side, I, we don't have, an, an, I can't even pronounce it, amomorphic uh, lenses. So I, I'm not sure that we could answer that question properly. Okay. All right. Well, thank you both. And and for those of you in the audience who are asking some of these questions and, uh, you know, in the event that we don't get to some of your questions here, uh, we'll definitely love to continue the conversation and, and kind of, uh, I think from our registration information here, uh, we'll be able to, to contact outreach and, and like I said, continue the conversation to, to kind of learn a little bit more um, or clarify on some of your questions. Uh, let's see. Brian has a question here. He's asking... Um, would you suggest a widescreen for 21 by nine that has a horizontal, that has horizontal bars on the sides or get a 16 by nine screen that has bars for 21 by nine use? I Drew, think you want to take that? Yeah, go ahead. I, let's, let's take the 21 by nine screen example. Um, you're going to actually, the image that we're outputting is 1920 by 810. So we're going to fill the width of the screen with those 1920 pixels. Uh, the bars would be above and below. And in normal ambient light 
situations, uh, you, you don't really, you can't see those bars. All right. Um, you, as, as Russell was saying, you could also try to vertically stretch to get rid of the bars, but now you're kind of changing the aspect ratio, right? Um, if, yeah, that's how I'm going to answer it. Sorry. Yeah. The, the, the one thing, the, the one part of the question, he might be referring to maybe like a masking screen or something too. Um, I, I'm just trying to, to maybe put his question in context. Um, so it, it depends on the, the viewer's choice and kind of, you know, when you're designing these systems, kind of what screen to go with. Um, you know, if you find out that a lot of the content that's going to be watched is, um, then this is the home cinema side. If you find out a lot of the content is going to be movies, uh, you may want to consider that wider format where, you know, when you're watching your content, you've got two, three, five to one filling the screen, uh, but you will have pillar boxes on the left and right when you're watching your 16 by nine content. Uh, the other option, of course, is going with a 16 by nine screen and then having letter boxes above and below the image uh, for those widescreen movies. Um, it, it really depends on, you know, the design of the room and uh, ultimately what you're trying to deliver for your customer. Okay. All right, thank you, Russell. Um, <clears throat> next question coming in. Uh, this one's from Mark. Uh, do the custom install projector support 21 by 9 without a firmware update out of the box? Drew, you want to take that? I think he said the CI, yeah. the home theater. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the firmware update uh, that we're talking about today, the 21 by 9, um, this exciting update to our uh, projectors is for the professional line. Um, for our home cinema line, uh, they all have the uh, internal scaling modes if you wanted to use uh, an anamorphic lens. This includes our entry level XW5000 ES model. Um, because the entry level XW5000 ES model is a manual zoom operation, it does not have picture position or lens memory. So that would be a feature as you up, uh, upgrade to the XW6000 model. Uh, but all of them out of the box are compatible with, uh, with 235, uh, at least by using the scaling modes. And then the 6,000 and up are also compatible by using picture position. Okay, great. Thank you, Russell. And then I think on the projection side, you know, Drew did mention earlier, uh, just to reiterate, uh, the ultra compact, uh, the PHC 51 and 61, um, and the FHC 85 and the FHC 80, those are now shipping with uh, that firmware update uh, included right out of the box. Uh, for those of you that do have, um, that did purchase those models, um, you know, if uh, you purchased it previous to, I believe, about the January timeframe of this year, uh, then there is the firmware update that uh, we will have the links for that you can go to. Uh, and again, it's on pro.sony.com uh, under our uh, the professional projection page. And uh, there's a section where you'll be able to download uh, the firmware as well. All right. So let's move on here. I've got another one here from Yan. Uh, his question or their question is, I saw the input resolution is up to 4K, 16 by 9, 16, 10. Is there a 21 by 9 resolution um, is supported? Is there 21 by 9 resolution is supported, which PC can read the resolution? What is the resolution of the 21 by 9 support? Well, I think I showed that on the first slide I presented. Um, 21.9, what we're seeing, I mean, it's an aspect ratio, right? It means there's there's 21 units wide by nine units tall. But the resolutions that, that we list are 2560 by 1080 or as high as 3440 by 1440. Okay. Um, and in that 4K, you know, I, I believe these both of these series... Uh, do support the 4K uh, 60p input, um, you know, for 16 by 9, 16 by, 16 by 10. I believe it would also support it for 21 by 9 as well, or is that something we need to find out? No, nope, that's correct. We, we can do 30p or 60p at 21 9. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's see. Um, John is asking, do all of the aspect ratios keep the same brightness? 
Um, I'll talk. Go ahead, Drew. You want to talk? Take that. Well, so, so on the pro side, you're 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 sixteen ten and sixteen nine. Well, sixteen ten, you're using all of the pixels on the panel on the LCD panel, right? All, all 1920 by twelve hundred. When you go to uh, twenty one nine, sorry, when you go to sixteen nine, it's still going to be as bright as because we're kind of scaling, right? To to uh, take advantage of of the panel uh 21 by 9 we're we're really only lighting up three quarters of the panel right 1920 by 810 is what we're actually projecting as a output from the from the projector the those same. those those pixels ought to be the same brightness uh, in my opinion it, it's the same on the home cinema line too drew um so if you you know you take a uh, like our native 4K chip, which is you know 3840 by 2160 on the uh, XW7000, uh, 6000 to 5000 models, um, anytime you uh, watch 16 by 9, you're, you're getting the full 3840 by 2160. Uh, when you watch a movie that has like black letterbox bars and you're seeing the bars uh, above and below the image, um, as Drew mentioned, you're only lighting up a segment of the chip then. So uh, you're actually lighting up about 25% um, fewer pixels uh, when you're projecting those black bars. So the brightness, if you're not using the full chipset in the projector, there is a decrease in brightness uh, depending on the aspect ratio. But if you utilize that full chip, uh, then you're, you're maximizing your brightness for that content, so. Okay, great. And let me take a look here if there's any more. So we got that one. Okay, I think we are at the end. Yeah, I think we're at the end. Uh, for those of you who did ask any questions of us, uh, again, we will reach out uh, and just kind of follow up with those of you that did submit questions. Um, if we didn't answer them satisfactorily, uh, then, uh, then you know we'll have a chance to kind of dialogue back and forth uh, after after the Tech Tuesday uh, over the next few days or so. So I think with that, that's it for the Q&A. So um, thank you everyone for joining us today as we talked uh, about the 21 by nine aspect ratio and um, you know how we're expanding the canvas, uh, especially in the uh, commercial application side for those different applications that Drew had talked about earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, especially on these new models, the, uh, the PHC 51 and the 61, as well as the VPL, uh, FHC 85 and 80, uh, mid range class installation projectors. Uh, and again, thank you, Russell, for talking about the, the history of, of the widescreen aspect ratio. So with that, um, I think we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's session. Uh, I know as we launch into, uh, our next tech Tuesday, I wanted to kind of cue everyone up. Uh, as we talk about the next uh, Text Tuesday, that's going to be on March 26th. And uh, that session, we're going to be focusing on a new product introduction with the uh, Bravia EZ20 uh, L series. And so uh, that's going to be another exciting uh, Tech Tuesday. And we hope to see everyone soon uh, again here at the Sony's Tech Tuesday. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a great afternoon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Drew.